We're recording? Okay, yeah. We're recording. Welcome to another episode of Unorthodox Logic with Marv. Now, first and foremost, I want to apologize about last week. The reason why I did not record last week is because my wife had to get surgery and it was important that I was there for her. It's that simple. I usually put out an announcement, but I wanted to wait until we were in the all clear uh, before we did that. So everything's good. She's healing. She got little stitches on her face. She don't look like Forrest Whitaker or anything of that nature. No droopy or nothing like that. So we here. We lit. Now, there's some topics that I would need to talk about, which uh, we need to discuss. Let me just get them all pulled up. Let's see here. What's this? Why are all these weed dealers be trying to hit me up on Instagram like I'm supposed to just cop some weed and they're going to ship it on through the mail? Come on, man. Get your game right. All right. So what we want to talk about is the extra layer um, that is racism. And then I'm going to talk to you all how the government is structured like a job structure. So it's I want you to understand how things work, the dynamics of it, things of that nature. Um, so basically, the president is the founder and owner. The governors are the C um, CEOs. Um, you know, the HR, where they play at, things of that nature. Um, and then also, I want to show you all, like, how racism is the extra layer because we we can't we have to understand that everyone has to work hard that's just there's no getting around that but the thing is black people have to deal with that extra layer of racism in all facets of life um, systematic white supremacy and I want to actually explain to you how that affects you I'm gonna give you several examples of how that can affect um, someone's day-to-day -day life. Because people like to say, oh, racism over, or I never, or I don't see racism, or I don't see color and all that. That's fine. You don't have to see color, even though you're being stupid. Um, you can think racism over. It's far from over. It's actually doubling down, tripling down as we speak um, with this whole Blue Lives Matter, cops versus people, and a whole bunch of other shit. So I'm going to break that all down. So I want to first just talk about, because the, the, the shorter subject is going to be the government, how it's like a job structure. Um, so like I said, because this is not going to be a long episode, the president would be equivalent to what the founder is. So yeah, the founder, or honestly, let's, let's say the founder and the CEO. We're going to put them on the, let's, let's say the founder is the CEO because he's active. The president is active in the government. The president will be the founder slash CEO of the company. Under that will, of course, be the vice president. So what that would be? Executive vice president. Da -da -da -da. I'll let you put that together. So we're not. I'm not going to do the cabinet. I'm not doing the cabinet. Um, I'm doing offices. So the president, governor, mayor things of that nature, city councilman. Like, I, I'm going to break it down there. I'm not going to do the whole cabinet. Um, what what would be this person, like, in this cabinet and the secretary of defense? And there's no secretary of defense at your fucking job. That'd be security guard. You know what I mean? The head of security would be the secretary of defense. You know what I mean? The um, uh, I guess the, um, the speaker of the house would be a PR representative. I'm not sorry, not the speaker of the house. Um, uh, the White House Speaker will be your PR. Um, I know I said I wasn't going to do the cabinet, but I don't know. I already went on a tangent anyway. So the um, Secretary of HUD, which is um, Home Urban Development, that will be somebody that goes out. That will be a community relations person that also will work in the PR department. Um, your HR department would be um, equivalent to Secretary of State. That'd be HR department. So that, that's just to give you an example how that works. But I want to get into the more the more the meat of the thing. So then you got your governor. Your governor will be equivalent to a regional manager. There's 50 states, 50 governors. There's also um, providences as well. So there's a governor of Puerto Rico and stuff like that. So 
for every place that has a governor, those would be regional managers. That governor slash that regional manager is responsible for that region. They report up. Now, in our particular in our particular government structure, the governor technically does not report to the president. The governor seeks assistance from the federal government. Um, in particular, New York State contributes the most taxes, so they should be getting the most federal assistance. Whenever, when, when things go crazy, whatever the case may be, whenever shit goes down, New York State should be getting the most back because they give the most. Um, New York State, California give the most. Um, so, like, when there's natural disasters like Hurricane Katrina and, and shit like that, when it's time to start passing out money, a lot of that times it comes from New York State tax dollars. So when you see me talking crazy, talking about all you motherfuckers that still want to live in Louisiana, especially New Orleans, that shouldn't be a permanent resident place for anybody because they always need fucking assistance. That's what I'm talking about. They always need fucking assistance. I'm tired. I don't want to give them no more money if they're going to keep living in that shit. We can do better with that money. That's all I'm saying. I rather let's get them some money to move. One time thing. Instead of every fucking couple of years, we gotta give a bunch of money to Louisiana, in particular the New York, New Orleans area, because they keep getting flooded out. Obviously, that's not a livable area. Let's stop trying to make it a livable area. Just a thought. Just a th what type of shit is this? Just a thought. But um So the governors would be the regional managers. Then, um, within each region, there's store managers, right? The store managers would be the mayors of each city. So each city would represent a store, and that store needs a manager. That is what the mayor would be. Now, I'm not saying how checks and balances work within the government, because we can get into that another time. What I'm trying to do is get you to understand how you break down the government and what level each person is, so you know who's who's top dog, who's not. Now, the mayor would be the store manager, and then each department manager would be the county legislators. Right? So, uh, slightly above the department managers would be the supervisors that report directly to the mayor, a.k.a. store manager. There's a set of supervisors. Walmart likes to call them managers. So if you're ever in Walmart, there's a store manager, then there's managers, and then there's managers of departments. Right? So those managers that's above the managers of the department, those would be the city council and council women. Now... I know y'all thinking, where does Congress come in? Senate, House of Representatives. They don't fit in the company, to be honest with you. They would be like the board of directors. So I guess they would fit. They would be the board of directors. When things need, when laws need to get changed or rules need to get changed, go consult the board of directors. Say, hey, look, we got this problem. We got this, 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 and this. How you want to proceed? They want to vote to cut a stimulus check. You know? Shit like that. Um, where I leave off at? City Councilman? Okay, yeah. So, that will be the equivalent structure of the government. Of how, like, if you want to understand exactly what people are. Now, don't think of it from a power perspective because. The government isn't based on a company with power. I'm just trying to show you how to place figureheads. You want to know who's at the top and how you work its way down? That's all I'm trying to give you. Do not think of it as, oh, so you're saying that the president should be able to just do whatever he wants. He can fire this person and fire that. No, he can't do that. What I'm just trying to do is give you a figurehead of how you can see it. So when you're trying to figure out, well, who's higher on the chain? Like, how does a governor under a president... I'm going to break that down. So I think it's actually important y'all know what power each person has. So I'm just going to give y'all a quick summary, though, before I move on to the next topic. Because, again, it's not going to be a long show. So 
there's checks and balances throughout the entire government, government, right? So the president is not supposed to have more power than the, which is the executive branch, it's not supposed to have more power than Supreme Court judges, which is the judicial branch, and not supposed to have more power than Congress and um, the Senate. I'm sorry, Congress, which is the House of Representatives and the Senate, is not supposed to have more power than them. They would be the legislative branch. So they're supposed to all have different powers, but they're supposed to be able to check each other so one doesn't overstep their boundaries and overstep their powers, things of that nature. So, like, the legislative branch can um, can vote the president out of office, essentially, if he oversteps his boundaries. If they bring charges on him, go to court, go through the hearings and things of that nature, impeachment hearings, they can vote to impeach and remove him. Problem is, there's two sides of the government. Anytime, whatever executive, um, whatever the executive branch is controlling, so if there's a Republican in the um, presidential seat and the Republicans control the uh, the Congress, they're not going to remove him unless he does some crazy, crazy shit. And right now they just letting Trump run rampant because um, at this point he's been doing some goofy shit beyond illegal. Anyway. I got this powder and shit, and I gotta stop eating. So that's how that works. You get checks and balances. Um, the governors do not report to the president. The president can't do anything as far as punishing the governors besides withholding federal funds from them, which is big. Um, if a governor is trying to repair something or trying to, you know, um, better his state and the federal government is withholding funds even though the federal the, that state is paying their tax dollars to the federal government and in return it's supposed to be like hey when I need help I'm supposed to send the help back that's just a trade off a president can still say no nah, fuck you I don't fuck with you and I'm withholding all your federal funds kiss my ass so that that's where the president comes in at and the way he uses that power is what makes it corrupt or not and honestly uh, the current president Trump is doing that he's very corrupt with it um, anybody who does it speak good of him, he withholds their funds, delay their funds, shit like that, and then people suffer from that. Even his own voting base, which they're so fucking stupid, they are truly stupid, that they'll suffer um, to maintain white supremacy, and we understand that, and you gotta understand that they will catch astray. Um, there was a young, um, young white kid with autism who was shot by cops, and these people that scream, all lives matter, are nowhere to be found. And all I see is black people sticking up, um, speaking up for this kid, trying to give him justice. And they're like, yo, where are all these All Lives Matter people who make everything about race? Now here's your time to shine and you know where to be found. Why are you not standing side by side with us? Why are you not upset like we are? And they know where to be found. So again, I told everybody, y'all got to stop looking for them to show any type of sympathy or things of that nature. Because these people that y'all looking to get the sympathy from are demonic. Um, people that believe in white supremacy and continue to perpetuate white supremacy, whether they say it or not, their actions say everything we need to know. Um, they're demonic, man. So they, they're they okay with some of their own catching astray. When Dylan Roof gets the death penalty, they're not. They're not going to cry any tears about it. They understand that, hey, some of our folks, some of the people in our ranks are going to fall, but that's all a part of war. That's a necessary part of war. And if you don't understand that that's a necessary part of war, then maybe we need to sacrifice you. They'll sacrifice some of their own. For the greater good? Man, listen. They will sacrifice some of their own for the greater good with no problem. With no problem. So... That's why you don't hear people stomping and screaming, screaming on Lives Matter, because they are willing to sacrifice their own. Let me turn this light on. Let's see if it helps. Look at that, baby. Your boy Slimmy. He's slimming down, baby. Yeah. Uh, that helped a little bit. So, understand that. Stop looking for sympathy. Stop looking for some type of... I don't know, human emotion from these people because they're not going to give it to you. Um, that's just who they are. Um, those are the worst kind of people. And anyone who sides with them and agree with them and align their views with them is the worst type of people to me. So it is what it is. Um, there was also a cop in my city in Niagara Falls um, where he got called to a distress call 
Um, it was a man who um, pants were ripped. Essentially, they got they caught him saying, "Hey, this man was exposing himself." He gets there, the man had ripped pants, so he just um, he gave him some pants out of his trunk. Said, "Hey, man, here, take these pants, put them on." Da 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 da, and he took a picture with him. Next thing we know, it's the net. There's people praising him, and there's some people like, "All right, y'all praising this man like he, ain't, you know, he did his job." Um, you know, doing your job isn't giving pants to people and stuff like that. But that is proper policing. So I guess you, you know, some people may say, "Hey, that is doing your job." That's proper policing. Um, your job is to protect and serve, and that that that's serving. You know what I mean? That's the right thing to do. The worst thing you could have done was arrest this man for indecent exposure because he can't afford pants. You know what I mean? So that's a thing that 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 came about, and that's cool, or whatever. Um, you know, I I don't really, I'm not gonna be cheering, uh, and I'm not gonna be talking bad about it. It is what it is. You know, he did his job. He did a good job. You know what I mean? The bar is in the sewer. So and, 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 and if we put it in perspective, you know, you might want to throw a parade. Um, I won't come to the parade, but I'll give him a little head nod, you know. All right, cool. Good job. Cool dude. I know him. You know what I mean? I'm not going to say his name on here. I know him. I served in the military with him. Good, cool, 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 cool guy. So I'm not surprised, but you know, at the end of the day, we got bigger fish to fry. We got more important things to be worried about than something, something like that. So it is what it is. Now, what I also want to talk about is this extra layer of oppression is what I'll call it. You see, I'm one of those folks who understand that no matter who you are, no matter where you from, no matter what walks of life you come from, everyone has to work hard. Everyone has to work hard. Now, are there billionaire people who get stuff handed to them and their hard work isn't as hard as the person that's coming from the mud? Of course. But there's no way you can ever be successful in this world without working hard in some way, shape, or form, even if you scam it. Even if you scam it, you got to work hard to gain credibility to be able to scam. You can't just come out of the blue from nowhere, drop out of the sky, start scamming and thinking it's going to work. Because it won't. Hold on. So, that's something you got to understand. So with that being said, I want to give y'all some examples of how, for those of you that are doubters or don't think that there's systematic oppression for black people, or don't think racism is still alive, or say, hey, stop being lazy, stop making excuses, I had to work hard, you can do it too. There was a picture where you see there's um, a black person and a white man, I don't remember if it was a black woman or a black man, um, where they are running the same race essentially, same length, I should say, going to the same goal where the white man path is clear and the black person path comes from hell. Now, let me explain to y'all how that fig how that works. I'm going to use a white man and a black man. And I'm going to show y'all how when you build a system of racism, it perpetuates itself. It doesn't need to be said. There doesn't. There's no secret meetings that need to happen. There's no hand signals that need to happen. It's just embedded in the culture. And it just happens on its own. We're going to call the white man Bob. We're going to call the black man Jamal. White man Bob, black man Jamal. All right? Bob and Jamal come from the same neighborhood. Mm, we'll say lower middle class. I don't want to make them both poor because then they end up being crackheads or some shit. You want to be on meth and want to be selling on the meth. So I don't want to do that. I want to come from lower middle class. Bob and Jamal come from lower middle class families. Barely gets by. Didn't miss a meal, but... They don't have the family where they're going on vacation multiple times a year. 
Um, you know, maybe sometimes it's, uh, you know, Christmas a little tighter than next year. Sometimes you got a good Christmas. Sometimes you got bad Christmas. You know, it ain't the, it ain't a life full of, it ain't a life of silver spoon. It's a, it's a, it's a working class family, blue collar family, you know, um, same neighborhood, you know, and then, uh, Bob and Jamal going through life, going through school, things of that nature. So here's where trickiness comes in at. Bob and Jamal is in class together. They actually go to the same school, same grade. They're in high school. They go see their guidance counselor their senior year. Now, I know for a fact that Jamal and Ari didn't face racism, but I'm going to just skip to the senior year because I want y'all to see the systematic version of it, not to just, uh, oh, my God, he treated him wrong, and he doesn't get the benefit of the doubt, things of that nature. I want to teach you how in system how it affects you financially, things of that nature. Bob and Jamal is getting ready to go to college, so they go see their guidance counselor. They got the same guidance counselor. Bob's walking out with a smile on his face. His guidance counselor just told him, hey, man, you got decent grades. You come from a, a lower middle class family, so you probably be able to, you know, you can get some financial aid, and you should apply for a couple scholarships, and as long as you work hard, man, you, you can get through it. It's going to be some hard work. You know, you don't got the silver spoon. You don't get the privileges that those rich kids get. But if you work hard and you stay focused, you can be something out here, Bob. Bob's walking out with a smile on his face. Jamal walks in. The guidance counselor, why? The guidance counselor has a son who may one day, because she's a working middle class family too, who may one day be Bob. So she wants the best for Bob because she wants the best for her son. This is psychology I want y'all to break down. This is the psychological analysis that I want y'all to be understand how this shit works. And it isn't a spoken thing. It isn't something they sit at the fucking dinner table and talk about. It's a psychological thing. It's a subconscious thing. Bob reminds her of her son. Shit, they even got the same color eyes. Her son can grow up and be Bob as long as he stay on the path because Bob is a good kid. Jamal walks in. Now, this guy in his counselor don't know that Bob been vandalized some shit. He just hasn't been caught. Jamal ain't never do no shit like that. Jamal actually goes to school, go to work, do his homework. After he get home from work, work a little short, little four-hour shift, get a little extra money, trying to help his parents out around the house, things of that nature. And, you know, he's a clean-cut kid. But his name is Jamal. And Jamal, the name Jamal, has a bad fucking reputation. Sounds like a black man's name. So the guidance counselor get in front of Jamal, and she's looking at Jamal like, I'm not even about to sit here and waste this whole hour trying to tell this boy he can be something. I know he ain't going to do shit, but get out of high school, end up in jail or dead like the rest of them do. But she looks at his grades and like, I've seen this before. A kid too smart for his own good, going to end up dead or in jail, catching up with the wrong crowd. So she tells Jamal, hey, man, trial for community college, a trial for the local university. See what they say. She didn't tell Jamal about the black scholarships that's available for kids like him. To help him with the opportunity. She didn't show Jamal the same scholarship opportunities she showed Bob. She didn't show Jamal or talk to Jamal for that full hour to get his, see where his head at. To find out that Jamal wants to be an engineer. And his math grades all four years of high school looks promising. She didn't even really look at his grades like that. She saw decent grades to her. They was good, but he might be getting help because he black. Who knows? The teachers might be just giving him better grades because he black. She got that kind of attitude towards him. So she probably thinking, he can't keep up at no damn MIT. He can't keep up at no Ivy League school. 
he can't keep up there, even though MIT is researching and trying to get more diverse um students in their faculty, Jamal fits the description, Jamal fits the profile, Jamal got the grades, he fits the financial profile, and he can actually get an MIT as long as he gets certain grades on his SAT, full fucking ride. But because Bob don't got that same opportunity, aka her fucking son that she sees in Bob, she's pissed off and think that she tired of blacks getting handouts, so she ain't gonna tell Jamal shit. Jamal don't got access to that information, so it's no way he would know that shit. Because a lot of times, a lot of those scholarships, sometimes you want to put a simple Google search in, what scholarships are available, but Jamal never heard of MIT. I never heard of MIT coming out of high school. So if I wanted to be an engineer, I, I mean, I guess I would have to try to look and see what's the top engineering schools. I don't know. But... Jamal, don't, he don't really, he knows he wants to do something that involves some type of engineer work. He just don't really know what yet. He just have an affinity for things like that. He noticed it's a natural thing. He, he was able to recognize it. Because one time he was talking to his uncle. Or he was talking to somebody at the doctor's office that said, hey man, you ever think about doing him an engineer? But the guidance council not going to tell him anything about it because she's jealous. She's upset. She feel like Jamal's getting a handout because they're looking for diversity now. And the playing field not even. And she's helping perpetuate the uneven playing field because she's not giving him the information he needs to level the playing field. So she don't tell him that information. Jamal goes off. Into community college. Then he goes off to university. Bob goes off to university. He got his scholarships because she told him all about everyone he has an opportunity to get. He has decent enough grades. He fits the financial profile. They're trying to get the lower class kids to pull up. But he didn't fit the diversity profile. But he didn't care. He wasn't going anywhere. He needed to go ahead and fit a diversity profile. He didn't go to HBCU. So diversity profiles mean nothing to him. He got into his dream college. Bob did. Meanwhile, Jamal got lost in the sauce because he didn't know he was an opportunity away from going to MIT. He had the grades. And he would have been eligible for the full ride scholarship or mostly full ride, however you want to do it with financial aid. It would have covered everything and Jamal could have been at MIT, the next engineer, helping change the world. Highway rail systems, things of that might come on, man. I'm engineers. What's that hyperloop they talking about right now? That's engineer work. Jamal could have been working on that, but because his guidance counselor didn't tell him the information he needed, Jamal never took the path he should have took. And when he started looking into schools about engineering, it was too late. He missed the deadlines. He didn't have enough money to cover it. So he ended up at community college, then went on to university. Never got the opportunity to do an engineer. Now he's working a job that he's not really happy about. Now he's putting his degree to use. So yeah, Jamal educated, but he ain't changing the world by going through MIT, meeting the connects he would have met. You know? That simple act of Racism is what we're talking about. That right there, that one guidance counselor could have changed his life. But she chose not to because she's upset and she thinks he's getting a handout because the world has been unfair to people that look like him in the past and now they have to right their wrong. Let me give you another example. Because that was off the top of my head. Let me give you another example. Give you two names. I'm do a white woman and a white and a black woman. White woman name is gonna be um, Margaret. She's named after her grandmother. Fresh graduate from um, college. Going off to her interviews right now. Margaret. 
another black girl named after her grandmother. They both gonna be named after their grandma. Her name is gonna be. Hmm. It's a black woman's name. Um. Shit, I can't be thinking about name this goddamn long. Let's go with Diane. Black girl named Diane. White girl named Margaret. Both graduated college. Great grades. Colleges really don't give, I mean, jobs don't really care about grades. They want to know about your opportunities. Sometimes they ask about grades, things of that nature. So they're going off to interviews. Margaret and Diane end up at the same job interview. Now, the job is high, looking to hire three different people. Both these two young ladies have the opportunity to both get in. But um, when Margaret gets there, she sees the secretary. The secretary smiles at her, asks her how she's doing. Secretary says, oh, I like your eyes. My daughter has the same eyes. My granddaughter, excuse me, has the same eyes. This is an older lady, secretary. Tells her to go sit down. She's going to get ready and call the interviewer to come get her. Interview, she calls the interview. Interview come gets her. Boom. Diane comes there. Now, Diane is one of them little fly little black women. Secretary gets a little uncomfortable when Diane comes in the office because she know all those white boys in the back is going to be salivating at the mouth trying to get at Diane. And they ain't going to really want Margaret, a.k.a. they don't really want her granddaughter no more. Racial cleansing. So when Diane gets there, she's smiling. She asking how she's doing. Talks about the weather. The lady gives her short, clipped answers. Told her to have a seat. Somebody will be up there to get her. She didn't say she was going to call the interviewer. She said somebody would be up there to get her. Because she also knows that black people have a reputation of being late. So what she's going to do is, she know what time she's expected. Diane's on time. Actually, she's early. She waits until the interview time has passed before she says, I don't know what's going on. Let me go ahead and give a call. And when she gives a call back to the interviewer to come get Diane, she makes it seem like Diane just got there. Now, she don't say Diane just got there. She calls back and say, hey, I have a Diane waiting on you. Now, the secretary knows she should have said, Diane has been waiting on you since this time. But she purposely says, hey, I have a Diane waiting on you. After the time of the interview was supposed to start, because that implants in the head of the interviewer that Diane was late. Black people have a reputation of being late. So now, when Diane goes to that interview, she's flying through it, she's looking good, everything's great. They can't get out of their head that Diane was late. So is she going to be late? If she's late to an interview, she's not even willing to put her best foot forward. So, yeah, this interview may look good because she knows how to dress it up real good. But Diane's probably going to be late a few times here and there. And that's going to probably start to drag. And then if we try and fire, it's going to become a, a lawsuit for racial discrimination. I, I just don't want to deal with that. So it's best that I tell her I'll call her back and hopefully we can find some candidates that's slightly better or close enough and we'll go in that direction. Now I know y'all probably thinking like, damn, you just blowing this whole shit up. It ain't like that. Bullshit. Bullshit. It's not like that. I'm going to leave y'all with those two examples because I want you to truly marinate on what I'm saying, how the psychology of this extra layer of oppression where there's information that's withheld from us, we're perfectly pigeonholed into certain situations. 
there's drugs flooded into our communities. The jail sentences that are given are triple the amount of time. Things like that. You see, California just passed a law. California has passed a law where they said if you're within 10 years of the age of the child that you molest, to register as a sex offender, this is in California, it will be subject to a judge's discretion. That extra layer of racism always works its way into our judicial system, don't it? <laughs> <laughs> So what do you think the judge is going to do when he is up to his discretion on who gets to register for, as a sex offender or not? They got to get those black sex offender rates up. And this is going to be something that's going to be implemented not only in California. You'll start to see it spread throughout like wildfire. Every Democratic, country, every Democratic state is going to have it first and then it's going to slither its way into these other states. I mean, call me Hotep, Sam Conspiracy Theorist, whatever you want to, but watch and see. It's another step closer to getting pedophilia legalized. This is just another step closer to getting pedophilia legalized because here we are. There's no reason why if you uh, uh, molest a child or, or rape a child, you should not be on a uh, you should be in jail for a long time. But you also should be um, registered as a child sex offender, but you know. California is going to be the first to say, we're going to go ahead and slow that down with these white men. Can't keep doing this to them. So that's what's about to happen. Don't believe me? Just watch. But I appreciate y'all listening to the show, man. Make sure you follow me on all social media platforms, HVO Marv. Make sure you follow Unorthodox Logic on all social media platforms, UL with Marv on Twitter. Um, Man, Again, I appreciate y'all tuning in week in and week out. Um, and uh, y'all let me, man, send me in. Make sure you tune in to Mars World Radio Thursdays, 10 p.m. Thursdays, 10 p.m. Mars World Radio. Make sure you tune in um, starting September 10th, 2020. So if you are listening September 10th, 2020 to Mars World Radio Live, um, you will make history of listening to the relaunch of a future Radio Hall of Famer. I'm speaking in existence, baby. Let's get it. All right. We out. Peace.